pleasure. Brother Bob, worship home, Bethan. This poem that we're about to do is something that's very meaningful to all of us. It says a great deal about what masonry is and what it's not. Well, well, well. Here's our son Bob come back home again. And see, Mother, he's wearing a brand new mason's pin. There's the square and the compass and that mystic letter G. So you all a master mason since you got your third degree. And you're going to take the chapter and the consistory and the shrine. You see that a shrine and pin will help you out in life. Well, maybe it will, son. But when your ma became my wife, she told me she wanted to marry me because of no pin. No, sir. She said it was on account of the masonry within. Mother, would y'all mind stepping out? There's one or two things in the blue lodge that I don't know about. Now, Bob, I'm aiming to help you get a real Masonic start. That there pin don't make you a Mason. It's got to be in your heart. Most all Masons are good men, son. But some are full of sins. And the orniest creatures of the whole darn world. Yes, them not just wear pins. They just wear them for business, son. Don't mean a thing to them. Their masonry doesn't come from within. To some, masonry's words is living fire. To others, just empty sound. You all know that in the 60s, I served with the boys in gray. Made that death march with Pickett on Gettysburg's final day. 16,000 across that plain, we charged right over our comrades slain. Through a huge hole in the wall, straight for a man in blue our boy. A great rock from that wall he tore to dash out my brains. But there, it fell. He saw a pin we both loved with. And in that battle's war and din, I heard him say, Pass on, my brother, pass in. So were you pin, son, but were with pride. Let it stand for your masonry inside. And when you hear the great architect they're calling you that final time, and you and your brethren are standing in line, remember, the tyler won't let you in because of the size or cost of your pins.